Hello, today I'll be responding to a question I get a lot, which I hope can be helpful to many of you that may have the same question, which is why my car or truck is overheating. In this video, I'll be showing you many of the reasons why vehicles overheat and how these components I have here eventually fail and can be the reason why your vehicle may be overheating. Up here on top, we got our coolant, also known as antifreeze, which is what vehicles use to keep an engine from boiling over and overheating. Next, we got our heater core, which is basically a small radiator which your vehicle uses the heat from the coolant that passes through it to heat your vehicle's cabin when you turn on your heater. Next we got our radiator hoses, which carries the antifreeze from your radiator to your vehicle's engine. And here we got a thermostat, which is used to allow your vehicle to warm up faster when cold and allow the antifreeze to circulate at its operating temperature. Followed by our water pump, which is what circulates the vehicle's antifreeze and essentially works like a heart to pump the coolant through all the components. Lastly followed by the radiator, which uses the incoming air to cool the antifreeze as it passes through the radiator. Here we got our antifreeze. Many of today's vehicles have a particular colored antifreeze that goes with its make. This particular one is orange, used in many of the newer GM vehicles, while the one next to it is blue, specific to certain vehicles as well. This is our number one reason why a vehicle will overheat. Either the vehicle leaked its coolant through one of the components, which I will show later in more detail, or maybe has not been getting checked as the fluid should normally be checked occasionally. This is our radiator's cap, and normally we have a reservoir nearby, which is where you would normally fill and top up your coolant. Whenever you add coolant, it fills the entire engine and all the components in the cooling system. But you never want to open the cap while the vehicle is hot. You always want to let it cool down before removing it. But maintaining this full is very important in making sure that your vehicle does not overheat. Here's a closer look at a radiator. They come in two styles where the radiator tubes are mounted vertically like on this one, or the crossfill style where they're mounted horizontally. They both work the same way though. The hot coolant comes in from the top, travels through the tubes, and the incoming air as you drive cools down the coolant, and then travels back into the engine through the lower hose. And here's a radiator with the horizontally mounted tubes. The hot coolant comes in from the top, through the tubes going sideways, and since it's longer it has more time to cool, and it comes out the lower hose. So how can these radiators cause your vehicle to overheat? Well, since new radiators are made of plastic, they can crack over the years like on this one. Or the tubes can get punctured and cause a leak. Or they can also clog up and not flow properly. Or like on this other radiator, the top tank seal can go bad and cause a leak. Next we got our radiator hoses. These hoses are tasked with holding all the hot coolant that's circulating the engine's cooling system and over time they do eventually go bad. How can you tell when they're bad? Well, you may notice the holes begin to bulge, look uneven, or the holes becomes rubbery, soft, kind of gummy, or maybe the hose looks collapsed, but no more obvious sign than noticing leaks around the hose or maybe a slight tear. Next, we got our water pump. The water pump has the task of circulating all the antifreeze through the cooling system. It's got inlets and outlets to circulate through the system like these for the heater core, and these upper two ports to circulate through the engine cylinder heads, and the lower two to the engine block. But these water pumps do fail as well. Normally the first thing that will fail is the seal, and it will eventually begin to leak, and you'll notice coolant coming out of these weep holes. Eventually if not replaced by then, the pump will seize up, and it won't circulate anymore. Here we got the vehicle's thermostat. This functions to regulate the flow of antifreeze into the engine. Under cold conditions, this thermostat remains closed, blocking out the flow of coolant from the radiator, allowing the engine to warm up faster. Once the thermostat reaches a specified temperature, it will begin to open, allowing the colder coolant from the radiator to flow into the engine. Here we got a close-up of a closed thermostat. Sometimes these thermostats do fail and they can either remain stuck closed like this one, never allowing the colder coolant to circulate into the engine, or they can remain stuck open like this one, allowing coolant to flow at all times, making the vehicle harder to warm up, but will never open fully. Another thing that can cause your vehicle to overheat is a bad radiator cap. This radiator cap keeps your vehicle's cooling system pressurized, raising the boiling point of the coolant. If the radiator cap detects too much pressure, this cap releases pressure into the vehicle's overflow tank, and when the pressure drops back down, it'll pull the coolant back in. You can inspect these caps by visually looking at the seals for any cracks or worn or damaged seals. If it does have any of these, it should be replaced. 
Here we can see all these components installed on the vehicle, with our radiator here up front, the lower hose attached to the water pump, with our thermostat in between, the heater hose is here on the side attached to the heater core, and the engine of course which fills with antifreeze to keep it from overheating, and all this hot coolant comes out from the upper hose back into the radiator. We'll now turn on the car so we can see just how this thermostat works and how you can use this to test if your thermostat is working properly. For this I'll be using an infrared thermometer, which will give us an idea of the temperature in certain spots of the engine, specifically the upper and lower radiator hoses. At first the temperature of the coolant should be even since the car has been sitting and has not warmed up. I also want to note that without the accessory belt, the water pump would not function, so you always want to have a good condition belt to run your accessories. So now back to the temperature. As the engine warms up, a good thermostat will have a higher temperature at the top hose than the lower hose, meaning the thermostat is keeping the lower temperature coolant from circulating. As you can see, the thermostat is now opening, so the antifreeze is circulating as it should since it reached the desired temperature, meaning we got a good thermostat. Another thing that can cause overheating is a partially clogged radiator. To test for this we can use the same test to look for any cold spots or hot spots. A good radiator will be even all around, but if you notice a spot that's colder than the rest, it could indicate a restriction in the flow. Here we got a heater core, which the vehicle uses to heat the cabin when you require your heater. The warm coolant provides us with the heat in conjunction with the blower motor which pushes air through the heater core, giving us warm air inside our cabin. But these heater cores can also get plugged or also leak, and when they leak you will notice a smell of coolant inside your cabin and usually a wet passenger side carpet. Here we got a radiator fan. These fans are very important when it comes to providing airflow through the radiator to cool the antifreeze even further. Normally these fans are controlled by the computer and a sensor, which it uses to tell the computer the temperature of the engine, and the computer at a certain temperature will activate this fan. These fans can be mounted in front or behind the radiator. When mounted this way, the fan pulls air through the radiator, the other way the fan pushes air through the radiator. And we also got fans mounted to the water pump itself. And these fans have a clutch system that the fan will free spin when the engine is colder and engage when the engine gets warm. Most common symptoms when your fans aren't working properly is your vehicle will overheat when parked or at stoplights. And a good way to test if your fan still functions is to turn on your AC. The fan or the fans will come on when the system engages and that way you will know if the fan itself is still good. But if it doesn't come on when beginning to overheat, maybe the problem can lie with the fuse relays, or the coolant temperature sensor. And here's the coolant temperature sensor for my car. Usually it will be mounted to the cylinder head or the water outlet. Last but not least is a head gasket problem. As you can see on this one the coolant was getting inside the cylinder. When this happens the vehicle normally overheats really fast because the combustion temperature makes the coolant boil over faster than normal. To avoid problems like these you definitely want to avoid letting the temperature gauge get to the red because that can make any potential small problem so much worse causing problems like these. I hope you were able to find this video helpful and informative. If you did, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.